Today is World Environment Day. That's a day that ever since 1973 has been observed on the 5th of June each year with a goal of encouraging action for the protection of the environment. Well, as we've said, each year the World Environment Day has got a theme and this year it's all about plastic pollution because more than 400 million tonnes of plastic are produced every single year around the world and only about 10% of that is recycled. Well, during the weekend, some negotiations here in Paris came to an end, involving about 175 countries. Uh, to tell us more about all of this, I'm joined by Julia Seeger. Welcome to the programme, Julia. Hello, um, Julia, could we soon be looking at a treaty here? Well, that's at least what we're hoping for. Now, delegates in Paris were only able for now to agree on writing a draft resolution. And the idea is to write it by uh, by the end of 2023. Now, it's supposed to be a binding global treaty. And uh, once they reconvene in five months in Kenya, Nairobi, they'll be looking at that draft. And the idea is to have a final version only by 2024. Now, it is indeed, uh, it's been described as a modest victory. And the reason why is because we still don't know what's going to be in that draft. And you still have so many uh, diverging standpoints. For instance, you have Norway and Kenya who are asking for a ban altogether of plastic pollution. You have France that is pushing for uh, a drastic reduction of plastic production. And other uh, countries like the U.S., India, China, or Saudi Arabia who prefer to only push to boost recycling techniques. Now, activists and NGOs say that uh, it is a milestone, especially in the light of the fact that they were, uh, they were really facing a lot of opposition, um, mainly from lobbyists who were inside the, the, the delegations and trying to derail the negotiations. Interesting. See, there are no plastic bottles on any of the tables there at UNESCO, not surprisingly. Uh, according to uh, UN numbers, the stakes are really high. Uh, and there's been no end in sight, really, these last 20 years, has there, to plastic production? That's right. In less 20 years, the plastic production has more than doubled and it could triple by 2060. As you said earlier, uh, it's estimated that approximately 430 million tons of plastic are generated globally every year. Of that, 51 million end up in nature and 13 million end up in the ocean. So plastic is everywhere. It's in our clothing items. It's in uh, the packaging, of course, that we use. And it's largely used by the farming industry as well. So you find it in the soil, you find it in the water. And that's how microplastic particles have largely entered the food chain. I don't know if you heard this number, the staggering number, Tom. It said that we uh, ingest about five grams of plastic every week. That's the equivalent of a credit card. So plastic does threaten ecosystems, biodiversity, human health. It's also in the air that we breathe, and it also uh, threatens, it's, it also contributes to climate change because most of the plastic is from raw material that is derived from uh, natural gas or oil refining. Yeah, someone was telling me about those tea bags, the very smart exactly. nylon ones, which end up with you getting lots of uh, plastic in your system. Now, let's talk about that great big plastic garbage patch or island, more like, in the mm -hmm. middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, some scientists are saying, now, let's not clean it up. Why not? Well, that's right. I wanted to address this question because it may seem quite odd, but many species have actually adapted to the pollution, particularly what we call neustrons. Now, these are living organisms like algae and mollusks, and uh, we find them, as you can see here, we find them specifically, or at least we've been seeing that they're developing quite rapidly inside that garbage uh, patch. And what scientists are saying is that these are mysterious species that we want to be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to study and to try to understand. So what they're saying is that they they want the patch not to be uh, cleaned up yet. Uh, now, the patch is threatening, too, because you have all of this microplastic that then sinks to uh, the deep sea, which is also a problem. And also, it creates these rafts. And all of this biodiversity mixes from different coastal areas. And then it's able to travel that way on that raft. And that could increase the risk of new pandemics. It sounds kind of terrifying, but I mean, there are solutions out there in hand to try to tackle this issue. Just tell us about a couple of them. Well, that's right. And that's why we have this day dedicated to these type of issues to try to see what the solutions can be. There are many initiatives. You have initiatives to try to rid the plastic that is already in the oceans, like these sort of vacuum boats, like uh, uh, the, the ocean cleanup. But you also have many initiatives to try to find an alternative to plastic altogether. So you have these new biopolymers, these new plastics. And you also have many initiatives, as you, you were you were talking about the bottles of plastic. That's a huge problem. Uh, so we have these new bottles made of algae, of molded cellulose, and we have the very first commercialized biodegradable bottle. It's coming from the United States, and it was only uh, put on the market a couple of days ago. It's called Cove, and it's made of vegetable oil and food waste. The only downside is the price, two euros per bottle, compared to 30 cents for a, a plastic bottle, but you have to start somewhere.
Absolutely. So help is at hand. Thank you very much indeed, Julia Seeger. Thank you for bringing us all the latest on that.